Guten Tag, ich begrüße Sie alle ganz herzlich zu unserer Online-Vorlesung Distributed Systems and Blockchain. My name is Thomas Borczek. Today with us we have Guilherme Sperr-Marchado, who is an entrepreneur and founder of X-Labs. Gil, it's a pleasure to uh, have you here. Uh, can you briefly introduce yourself? Sure, Thomas. Uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to, to be here um, also. So, yeah, my, my name is uh, Guilherme Spermachad, but like you can call me Gil. Um, I, I am a researcher, uh, entrepreneur, and a software engineer, proudly. Um, I, I title myself as a serial open source uh, project con contributor, um, you know, going to, to, to several niches and uh, trying to, to contribute and build something. Um, I have like around 15 uh, years of experience in the software industry uh, and also academic projects because I have a, um, uh, an academic background. Um, yeah, I hold up my, my PhD in computer science uh, from Muni Zurich, uh, where, yeah, I gave my contribution in, of, uh, in a project, in a blockchain project around 2013 and 14. Um, and uh, yeah, after this, I went to the, to the industry world, just uh, being a technical advisor of a tech, builder, a tech, uh, tech companies, uh, large companies, startups. Uh, and uh, yeah, now, nowadays, I'm in the constantly on the hunt, let's say, to discover things and materialize the, 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 the next big thing in the blockchain industry. Okay, great. And uh, so since you're a technical person, uh, what is your tech stack or what do you prefer? Are you more the front end guy, the back end guy? Which languages do you prefer? So what's your tech stack? So um, primarily I am a back end person. Um, so um, I have like JVM, Java, um, like knowledge because I worked with this uh, since uh, quite some time. Nowadays I'm doing a lot of Golang. Um, I have a curiosity like Rust, but uh, you know, this is catching up. Uh, so, but I, I could say that more um, like JVM kind of languages, also Kotlin um, in all the framework around uh, Golang and, um, and of course, uh, uh, blockchain specific languages, uh, Solidity and, uh, and uh, also more lower level virtual machine, uh, um, you know, um, languages in different blockchains yeah so uh, you mentioned uh, blockchain uh, which, which blockchains are you familiar with or with which blockchains have you worked so um, let's uh, let's go a step back and let me let me let me tell how how i got like to this world of like blockchain uh, so the one of my first projects or things that I've got interested um, I, I got involved was uh, at Uni Zurich um, back back then like um, uh, there was this project was that I was not the main driver but uh, I was involved um, in the in the Mensa of University of Zurich and uh, you know we we did the, the, the I mean the students did a, a payment system and uh, I mean this this got me pretty pretty much um, how can I say touched by by like this blockchain world because uh, even before I had um, I was researching peer-to-peer -peer systems uh, um, like decentralized storage and uh, so this was my first contact and after this uh, my first contact of course was with Bitcoin um, and uh, right after this with Ethereum and uh, I mean during just in the beginning of like my my industry career um, uh, I start advising some some blockchain projects where they had the need of uh, uh, Ethereum, you know. So it was in the in this ICO boom uh, where people start like you, um, you and together with colleagues, and so could you could you could you do something together? And uh, I was pretty much attracted by this. So and uh, I mean more or less in this time um, uh, I was start checking other kind of uh, blockchains, uh, not only um, Bitcoin and Ethereum, which is pretty att attractive, but also, for example, uh, NEO, um, the new blockchain, um, which um, they, they are more Asia-based. But uh, in, back in, the, in that time was, was more, um, let's say, they, they had another approach, you know, they had a, 
uh, proof of stake um, was was is it was a bit a bit different than Ethereum in Bitcoin, and that's why I want I want to go to this also to this space. Can you tell a bit more about the, the new blockchain? So how does it compare to um, Ethereum to Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. So what are the differences there? Do you have smart contracts in Neo, um, or is it payment only? Mm -hmm. So the new blockchain you can compare uh, with uh, Ethereum. So uh, there is a um, how can I say is not is not a, a a blockchain for only payment, but it's a general uh, general base uh, chain where you can write smart contracts. It's uh, it's Turing complete as well. So in this sense, it compares to Ethereum. The um, the the difference on this will be. Um, Will be like the consensus and uh, the governance that Neo uh, applies to their blockchain, uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's one one of the interesting uh, aspects, and also and also like uh, um, if if I can compare um, Neo and Ethereum, so uh, Neo has this this governance um, which is. Um, which is based on voting and changing parameters of the chain, uh, based on people that that has uh, a stake on on chain. So that's uh, that's what I make, but one of the key differences here. Yeah. And how about the community? Uh, so um, is there a lot of uh, community um, mm -hmm. with Neo? Um, can you compare this to sure. Ethereum or, or to Bitcoin? So well? yeah, that, that's that, that that's exactly one of the the points that got me um, when when I because I'm also a contributor of like Neo blockchain, um, and uh, we have a project called uh, Neo 3 j and others. Um, so. If you, if you look if you look uh, if if you compare like new neo and other uh, blockchains like tezos or um, cardano or others um, they have also a, new has a very strong uh, community um, which uh, is difficult to form i mean new blockchains is is, is there like since 2017 um, even before because it was rebranded but um, the, the the community part, I thought uh, an opportunity, you know, to 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 bring new ideas, to 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 contribute to the chain in a way that uh, maybe in other chains I could not. So that's uh, that's one of my the the, the key aspects. Uh, if you talk about uh, new as a as a community, and um, and I've I, I've got involved because there was a need. Actually, actually, it's a funny story. Uh, there was a need in one of the projects that I was an advisor uh, on writing specific software integrating with new blockchain, and then and then and then someone um, um, said, "Oh, Gil, can you develop this and this and that?" It was a, a library to monitor um, uh, a contract, and uh, the technology stack was set to Java, and uh, this this was one of the requirements because their whole backend was set to Java, and I said, "Okay, I can do it." And then I went to to the um, to the open source to the GitHub and search like oh there's a there's any project that do this for me, and uh, there wasn't. And I said okay that, that's a a good opportunity you know to to build something kind of a library, and then start growing and uh, apply to the project, but then publish to the others outside, and that's what I've done. Uh, so from this moment um, yeah onwards the, this project grew over time, and uh, yeah uh, I I got part to to the new blockchain um, being a um, a community member, let's say, um, you know, getting grants and forming a team, and uh, yeah, that's that's how we started my involvement in the new blockchain. Okay, so you have projects with, uh, with the new blockchain. Um, can you tell us more about this 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 project? Um, I heard there are also some nice uh, systems involved, like Kubernetes. Sure. So sure. Um, I'm, absolutely, I'm quite curious how this works. Yeah. So, um, so we at X Labs, we are yeah uh, uh, a small company, but uh, we're pretty much fo focused uh, in blockchain. But we have expertise in other like systems, uh, so in scalable systems, etc. So we have um, we have Neo 3 J, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you um, I'm gonna show you what uh, in, in in a sec. Uh, we have um, a new playground as well. Um, another project for for neo blockchain, um, and uh, we are also contribute uh, 
contributing to other uh, blockchain projects uh, that uh, is still confidential, but is in the DeFi space, uh, which will be released soon. Um, but um, let me let me show you let me show you some some of the the the, the websites here. So this uh, this X Labs, uh, we we are uh, we just worked with some some names in the in the in the Swiss blockchain scene actually, uh, and also uh, in the with Neo, which is a, a permissionless uh, public chain. Um, and um, one of the projects, so we have Neo3j, as I mentioned before, in a new playground. Uh, we have other um, open source projects, but uh, like Icionator um, and others, but uh, I would focus in these two, um, like today. So the Neo3j project, basically, it's a, it's a development toolkit that provides like uh, um, tools to build um, dApps, decentralized dApps in smart contracts using Java, but for the new VM. So <clears throat> if you go to, for example, this the, the neo3j.io is the website <clears throat> of, of the project where you have like the documentation, <clears throat> but also if you go to the, to the GitHub, you have some uh, examples and docs that you can you can explore, um, <clears throat> and uh, the nice thing about an L3J is that you can write your smart contract um, using Java, but um, but and then and then you don't need to to learn a new language like Solidity to to write uh, your your decentralized applications. You could write in Java and uh, deploy to the new VM. So yeah, you, you can you can see like a bit more in the in the repository. Uh, we release uh, kind of pretty frequently. For example, six days ago we had uh, a release, and we're planning. We, we usually we plan a release every every month, uh, bringing new features and, and bug bug fixing. Uh, so we're quite active, uh, like seventy percent of uh, test coverage and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is one of one of the the, the large projects uh, that we have, uh, which is not only it's not only um, um, a SDK, uh, a, a toolkit, but also a compiler. So it's two things. If you want to develop for your backend and monitor uh, the blockchain in the backend, you can. Uh, but if you want in, if you want to write smart contracts, you also um, you also can use a Neo 3 j so um, another project that I have here, um, and uh, because we, we, we ask ourselves, every time that you go to give a, a workshop or a tutorial, we, we, we explain the L3J, we said, okay, here you can write your smart contracts, you can open this nail file, uh, but you have to install Gradle, you have to install like an ID, uh, you have to um, maybe install Docker if you want to build uh, a small private uh, blockchain, you know, for, for you to, to test your contracts and stuff. And then, and then, like in this in this in this process of giving workshops and tutorials and uh, explaining to people uh, in this educational kind of uh, process, uh, I ask myself, like, is is there a better way of doing this? Is there an easiest way that people can uh, just go to a browser and select a kind of a template, uh, click on a button, and then have all this environment for you? So that's why we, we started this, this other project called New Playground, uh, which is basically uh, developing on the new blockchain. Uh, but uh, in your own browser, you get your own infrastructure uh, to, to play with. So before jumping and we can explore more um, the, how this is built and like the Kubernetes part and the scalability part of it, um, I, have to, I have to tell that uh, here um, we have um, it's based on templates. So, for example, oh, I want uh, I want to develop like in a in a chain, but um, I want Java, for example. So you can click here in Java, and you have uh, templates where um, you can just click on a button, and then it will uh, bootstrap um, yeah, the whole environment in your browser um, uh, for you to to play with. So, so what happens here behind the scenes? So yeah. 
So here behind the scenes, as you as you can see, um, I do some authentication with uh, in GitHub, and um, what you can see here, this this whole this whole um, uh, IDE, which is based on VS Code, uh, it's bootstrapped in a Docker container, uh, which is uh, in the server side. So in the front end here, you just do the rendering of of the um, you know, in the browser, but um, I pack, I pack all these templates, um, and I I pack VS Code uh, in a Docker container and l just leave um, as an image, you know, uh, on on a registry. So every time, anytime that someone wants to play with that, I take an instance, the, our backend, the new playground backend, uh, gets your request. Uh, check what is the template ID that I, that I have to bootstrap, and then identify this image, and then uh, bootstrap. And I do this using Kubernetes. So um, that's one of the 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 good uh, one, one one good solution that I that I that had because because I imagine if how how can I do this differently? Uh, can I do could I do some some scripting and uh, and build my own infrastructure for this? Yeah, I could. I could use Docker Compose. I could. But um, if you want, if you want like an scalable way of bootstrapping fast, uh, dealing with secrets, um, uh, uh, also uh, dealing with SSL um, and all these kind of different things uh, uh, in, in, that is infrastructure based, but in a programmatical way, uh, that's why I chose uh, Kubernetes. Okay, and uh, so do you host this uh, on, on a provider, um, Amazon or Google? Yeah. Um, it, it's one of one of those uh, big cloud providers. Yes, exactly. So we have um, we have um, an account in Amazon, but um, one of the questions uh, was where. How can I build my Kubernetes clusters? And um, and uh, so can I? Should I go to to Amazon? I think Amazon has a service already that you can just say, oh, I want a Kubernetes mm -hmm. cluster, or should I build my my own? I, I think EKS. EKS, yeah. exactly, exactly. So because sometimes I I want to know how things work, you know, really, and get to the control if I want to optimize something. Uh, I, pref I, I prefer to use this tool here called COPS, which is, uh, well, it's from Kubernetes. Um, it's the Kubernetes operation um, production grade Kubernetes installation. So basically this tool, what it does is you can, um, yeah, this, this line here, I think it, it says it all. It's a kubectl for clusters. So you can create a cluster, a Kubernetes cluster, uh, from with different machines, different nodes, and you can scale up and down using COPS. So um, basically what I had to do is to have an account in Amazon, uh, give these credentials, Amazon credentials to COPS, and uh, create a cluster with it. And that's it. Okay. Uh, but if you're on a blockchain, so blockchain, I mentioned in the lectures, uh, huge waste of um, CPU, of electricity, you need lots of disk space. Yep. So isn't this a problem for your cluster? Um, so no, actually, actually, uh, it, it depends if you, because this, this, um, this setup here is for uh, development and educational purposes. So um, you could go there to new, uh, new, new playground, uh, bootstrap uh, this environment, and then you have your code here, and then you can create uh, your mini blockchain inside this environment. And then probably your question is, what if many hundreds of people you know, create this environment here uh, at the same time? You know how this will scale. Um, so um, this is not not a problem. Um, uh, I just have we just have a limit of uh, 100 environments. I think now it's 100 environments that we can create uh, maximum in, in parallel. In parallel, okay. uh, but uh, of course um, I could uh, set up or uh, configure cops uh, to scale um, to add more nodes, etc. But it, it depends on resources. Then yeah. 
But one thing that maybe also uh, is interesting in terms of resources is um, what if someone, you know, malicious come and create um, 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 a, a, an environment like this, a new playground, a playground environment, and then just come here, uh, terminal, new terminal, and then like as you can see here now, you have a shell. Get near miner and uh, e ex mine. Ex yeah. Exactly. So yeah, what? And many people ask me this. So how do you control this? So uh, that's one of the nice features, um, and that's why I chose Kubernetes, for example, to 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 provide my this environment is that Kubernetes has um, uh, a system where we can limit uh, CPU and memory resources uh, on 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 that, and also bandwidth, and also bandwidth. Um, Although bandwidth is a bit, uh, for this specific use case here, uh, the bandwidth is a bit sensitive because, um, um, yeah, so if I decrease the bandwidth to one mega, things start to get a bit laggish, uh, the feeling. But uh, CPU and memory, you could, I, I, I have like a limit here of, um, I think it's uh, two giga and uh, half CPU. And uh, yeah, people can, can develop on their own browser. So. Yeah, um, this this one one of the measures to 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 go against uh, people that wants to be act as malicious person. But uh, another measure is um, um, uh, limit the time of this this playground because it's a playground. I, I don't I, I I mean this is only to try it out uh, things and uh, to get the the, the 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 look and feel and the the quick feedback on what you can do using new, uh, new blockchain and any Alter J, for example. But once you, you got to know how we do it, you can, for example, go in new playground and copy, get a zip of your files and continue the development uh, locally. You mentioned uh, development locally. So with Ethereum, for example, um, there is this Remix ID who has that has a JavaScript VM, so you can test everything locally. Uh, wouldn't this be an option for new as well? Um, it would be an option, um, but at, at, the, at the moment we don't have we don't have like this possibility to run, for example, um, uh, a virtual machine, the new VM, um, in the browser uh, in JavaScript, for example, or uh, so this is something that there are uh, discussions in the, in the community, in the new community, but uh, because in, in, and actually it comes back to the to, to your question of uh, tooling. What's the stack that you use? Uh, this this matters actually because if a project starts um, starts something in a in a in a tool set which is not flexible to some kind of use cases, then you know it's a bit more difficult. To, to provide uh, more native, more, um, how can I say, uh, um, uh, lightweight solutions uh, for, for developers. So yeah, at, at the moment, for example, the, the reference implementation of the new VM, the node, uh, is in C Sharp, and C Sharp doesn't compile you know, to Wasp, uh, for example, Wasm or, or any kind of uh, JavaScript runnable um, a solution. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that's under discussion. I think it will evolve, but uh, at this moment, um, no. That's why, for example, new playground is is one of the, the available solutions there. Okay, and uh, how do you see the the future of the developer experience? Um, I, I tell most students uh, that um, if you are familiar with uh, the current tech stack, with like uh, IntelliJ or Goland or uh, Eclipse or other tools, uh, if you go to the blockchain world, it's a bit different, it's a bit more difficult. So um, okay. how will the future blockchain engineer, How uh, what will be the uh, developer experience in future? Yes, I. that's a really great question. I'm, it's, um, I, don't, I don't have an answer, but uh, the, the, the it will evolve much. I mean, it will, it, this will evolve much more this developer experience. And uh, I believe that if you are a software engineer, uh, learning some concepts or some paradigms of, of a blockchain, you can be a blockchain engineer. But uh, nowadays, the, the tooling is kind of separate. Um, sometimes it works uh, in, in IntelliJ and like other tools and other blockchains don't. And you have like plugins, etc. And uh, it's 
it there it's a lot of time you know to, to develop languages to develop this tooling uh, for many blockchains so in my opinion at some point in the future uh, leaders like uh, Ethereum, like new blockchain or uh, blockchains in the public blockchains in the top uh, top 10, top 20, will will maybe they will converge to 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 a way that is uh, that it's a it's a, a a lingua franca we call like a common language, a common way of doing things. So I I would I see that. If you have like a language server, VS Code language server, um, and, and and all these tools, I think it's uh, it's uh, is getting some tractions. But then, for example, JetBrains, JetBrains, they're not friends of VS Code, uh, and it, it yeah, it, the ecosystem is, is 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 hard. This is a complicated question, Thomas. But um, we have we have we have to put some attention. I think all the in, the the whole industry have to put some attention to develop tools. That are more digestible to, to to software engineers, and also software engineers like the students have to complain to the blockchains. You know, go to GitHub and say, "Look, this is not good. So I want this and this and that." Mm -hmm. So I think it's a it's a ping pong, and uh, I think it will convert it sometime. But uh, yeah, let let's see, and let's uh, let's keep building, and uh, that's that's what it can do, and uh, contributing mm -hmm. to the ecosystem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The future will tell. Yeah, future will tell, yeah. Exactly. So, uh, thanks a lot for yeah. being here, for taking the time. Uh, I think it was very interesting, uh, the combination of blockchain and Kubernetes. Yes. Uh, thanks a lot. Cheers. Thanks a lot, uh, Thomas. It's a pleasure. Yeah.